Welcome to True Power, home of the most powerful marketing tools, training, and technology on planet Earth. Get ready to earn, enjoy, and experience more than you ever dreamed was possible. If you're tired of just getting by and ready to really thrive, then buckle in and listen up. Here's your host, Matt Fox. Well, welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, it is October 30th, 2021, one day before Halloween. So hopefully everybody's got their uh, game face on today. And we've got some things to go over that is pretty exciting uh, that we have some updates in the platform. So let me share my screen and let's take a look at the agenda. Today, we are going to be covering uh, some of the overview of the pricing platform updates, uh, some new looks and, and things that are going on in the back office of the pricing platform, how to use the NYMEX natural gas analytics to close longer contracts with your customers, uh, and a preview of the market data analytics that support that information, coupled with uh, the ISO upgrades uh, for security, uh, which is awesome that we've added that information uh, for the protection of our customers and some information that you'll be getting an email a little bit later today, but we'll go over some of the autumn sale incentives that uh, have come from our partners and suppliers, and then we'll open up the floor for a little Q&A. Um, just a, a quick little note, uh, going over the pricing platform upgrade. So if we jump over to our quick launch menu and go into our back office and under the uh, instant quote, if you click on that, uh, some of you may have noticed this pricing help box that we've added to the platform that will kind of guide you as to what you might want to take a look at or warn you if there are certain conditions based on uh, a customer's contract uh, to be able to kind of lead you a little bit into a direction that might be more beneficial for that customer. In this case, uh, it is actually letting us know that longer term contracts uh, are trading at a discount in the future and at the best rates today, uh, up market will, you know, seen with the, with the longer terms of 48 to 60 months. And so how do we know that? Well, you have to remember, if you click on here, uh, this is going to open up a uh, PDF sheet that is updated on a uh, constant basis. So let me see how I can uh, bring this up a little bit easier for you to see. So the NYMAX natural gas analytics is updated on a quarterly basis. And so that you can see the gas prices here looking towards the future where we have been experiencing over the past several months where natural gas prices have been skyrocketing. And so these are the indications that moving forward uh, out to 2025, that those rates are actually going to start decreasing. So gas prices are trending much higher than uh, recent months. However, uh, we know that longer term contracts are trading at a discount price. Uh, the best rates are seen uh, with term lengths of 48 to 60 months. Uh, extending the term length into years uh, 23, 24, and 25 helps put your customer in a significant lower prices. Uh, this provides your customer pricing relief uh, in the short term um, and brings down the weighted average of your customer uh, who is paying over contract terms. So it's important to note that you know, 50% of electric generation comes through natural gas. 
So this information directly correlates to the electric prices. Therefore, the same logic applies to the pricing of electricity. So when you're talking to your customers and they're wanting to have some sort of basis as to why you need to have longer term contracts of 48 to 60 months, I would definitely push towards the 60 months. Uh, that's going to give them a much better position uh, pricing wise. And it's also going to be good for you because your residual income is going to be for the next 60 months as well. So this is a PDF document that you can certainly download and send to your customer. Uh, and you can see that uh, over the course of the next six months, we have an average rate of uh, 4.1, it's dropping down to 3.6, 3.5, 3.43. 3. So this is really good news in light of everything that we've experienced over the past few months with natural gas prices on the climb. So that's good news. So uh, it's important to know that when you're pricing these, and let's just put in a, a zip code here, and I put in a Chicago uh, zip code, uh, right off the bat, it is going to pull in the utility and compare with whatever rate that they are currently on. Now it's basically taking the average of all the customers that are being added into the system with an expiration of October uh, is averaging at 7.71. Uh, compared to say September or August, July, June, some of those prices are going to be a little bit different. Now, this uh, tool is not available in all markets just yet, but you can certainly change the rate. So if that customer was at 8.9, uh, you can update that and that will update everything on the platform as well. So. Once this loads, uh, you'll see that um, there is now a new look uh, in the pricing platform. So it's a little bit easier to see. So you're gonna see the best overall, the best 12 months and the best 24 months. Now these are obviously shorter term contracts. Uh, this is a little bit longer, but going along with what we were talking about and how to get those customers to longer term contracts, you can select and filter the terms so that if you select all, now that's going to give us access to all of the, the pricing uh, that is available from all of the suppliers uh, currently. And so one of the things that we wanna do over here in the sort is go from long-term to short-term. And so that's going to put this 48 month at 7.9. Now, this particular customer's information that we entered was default at 51,000 kWh. But if that customer, we can see that 7.6, if that customer was using 250,000 kWh, that is going to have uh, an effect on the rate. So that it moved it from four uh, 7.6 to 7.4. Um, and so you can see that uh, this is gonna provide you a lot of, uh, a little bit easier to read information. We had uh, before those were a little bit smaller. We had the price and the savings was over in the middle. And then now you've got your commission for upfront and residual. So while we're talking about that, um, you know, in pre-COVID, the way that suppliers paid out was either upfront and residual. Uh, more specifically, it would typically choose between if you wanted upfront commission, you would get uh, the first year up front, and then the following years would be on a residual basis. Um, they were worried that there was going to be a, a lot more cause for businesses due to COVID to go out of business. And so they upgraded the residual side to make it more enticing. And so uh, 
um, rather than having the first year up front and then following with residual when you place the uh, a contract with a customer it's going to ask you whether you want upfront or residual think of it this way upfront is just really annual and residual is monthly so without having to change those terms because uh, they may go back to the old style but currently this is the new pricing that the suppliers work with and so uh, that's what we have to deal with so when you're placing a customer's contract if you select upfront or annual um, in this case if i was going with sfe then uh, if i was getting paid four thousand dollars in october then and they were on a 48 month contract as this one is here each year in october i would get approximately four thousand dollars in commission each year every on an annual basis versus getting a residual income um, and taking that 4250 dividing it by 12 and so you make a lot more money on the residual side and that's a good thing so just to clarify that information a little bit more and so when we look at these contracts we want to be able to look at you know uh, total commission what has the best commissions what's going to have the best amount of savings if this contract or this customer uh, uses uh, a lot more kwh annually then obviously the savings can be pretty substantial. So uh, that dropping their rate down to 7.4, uh, saving them $37,000, that's a 36 month term contract. So let's take a look at um, this here and we can see that um, the effective date for November is 7.4, but this red asterisk is just really notifying you that there are actually start dates that are going to be more favorable. So if we want to take advantage of that, we can click on that. That will automatically update the platform. So now we can see that it selectively took a we put in a lower rate it gave us the availability for a longer term contract a much better rate and the savings went from what was it 37,000 to 91,000 I think that's a much easier sell uh, than 37,000 so that's significant obviously the upfront commission being 17,000 residual of 18,000 so that's really really nice and i think that the way that we have uh, made some changes to make this a little more visual for you uh, is going to also enhance uh, if you happen to be doing this on your cell phone it's going to be a lot easier to read as well so those are some of the things that we have done uh, to kind of make the experience of pricing uh, with your customers a little bit easier and of course we can select all and we can put this to long term to short term contract so if we were going to send this customer a proposal we always want to include three different suppliers on the proposal uh, and one of the the main reasons for that is the data shows that if you put one supplier on the proposal, you've got about a 10 to 20% chance of closing that customer without a follow-up phone call. Now, obviously we know that you and I would follow up with the customer. We're not just going to send a proposal and not follow up with them. But when you put three suppliers, so you have a comparison, when you have three of your best suppliers on that proposal, it raises it from 10% to a 70% chance of winning that deal without 
a follow-up phone call. And again, obviously we're going to follow up. But so the data shows that we should always have three or four suppliers on that proposal. I think three is certainly enough. And we wanna make sure that they're always a different supplier. So we wouldn't necessarily wanna make uh, put, you know, uh, Hudson uh, against Constellation, NG, and then Hudson again, because that would confuse the customer having two different pricing rates uh, from the same supplier, even though this is a little shorter term. Uh, we wanna keep these as long as possible. So we've got one, two, three that are right around the 60 month uh, term. This is a fixed all in 60 month, another fixed all in 60 month. And then here we have one that is a fixed all in 54 month, which is a little out of the norm, which tells us that NG has a hole in their hedge. Uh, maybe they lost a huge client uh, and now they've got, uh, they're uncovered in their hedging practices on pricing. And so what they're doing is they're saying, okay, I'm willing to take a, a little bit of a hit now, compared to Hudson, that doesn't look like they have a, a very big hit, but uh, compared to NG against NG and normal matrix pricing, uh, this is going to be a much better rate than what it would normally be. And so this is what would be considered a sweet spot deal. So we'll get more into that down the road when we start talking about uh, the reverse auction or re request for pricing. Uh, that type of structure. But so I would want to keep all three of these in my proposal so that obviously the customer is going to lean towards uh, the 6.7 uh, or the 7.3, most likely 6.7. Now, what would happen if the customer was really pretty close? Because right now we've got them at 8.9. But what if this customer was at seven cents? So let's go ahead and update that. Well, now we can see that uh, the savings has dropped significantly. There's no, really not any savings here in Constellation and in NG, but I am also at five mils. So if I wanted to really make a, a, a deal happen quickly, maybe I would adjust this down to three mils or four mils uh, and, and take advantage of that slight change. So let's move that to three mils. And so now we are at 6.54. The savings has gone up on Hudson significantly. And so that's, that's really, really important. But uh, in any case, uh, just make sure that whatever that customer is currently uh, paying, we want to make sure that we're we're putting the correct data uh, in the pricing platform when we create a proposal. And in order to do that, we've got to have a copy of their utility bill. So uh, I just wanted to go over uh, how that is done and some of the updates that we have. Uh, included in the uh, back office of the pricing platform. Once again, this shows and documents out uh, the NYMEX uh, natural gas analytics. This is something that you can certainly share uh, with your customer. You can download this PDF, send it to the customer as backing, uh, as information, uh, so that they don't think you're just trying to make something up to get them to do something uh, they don't wanna do. So those are the updates in the pricing platform. I think it's, it's a lot more appealing to the eye. It's a little bit easier to navigate uh, and how to take and use that NYMAX natural gas analytics to close longer contracts. And then of course you can preview uh, that information in the market data analytics. And so uh, let's see if I can get this thing to load correctly. There we go. So up here in your market data analytics, 
if we look at Illinois, ComEd, and get statistics, we're looking at electricity right now in the wholesale market. And all we really want to do is to verify what the market is going to look like moving forward. So over the next uh, couple of months through January, we're going to see natural gas and electric rates continue to climb a bit. But after that, you're going to start seeing those things fall off. And there will be a little bit peak in July and August, just because that's when typically usage is at its highest. But compared to most years, uh, usually this is much higher. This is uh, obviously staying lower, and that's attributed to the fact that uh, the expectation of natural gas is going to continue to decline over the next few years. And so you can see that prices are going to continue to fall. So you can always back that information up by looking at the data analytics. You can always look at that and uh, just verify when should I be renewing this customer's contract and what basis do I have uh, moving forward. So I think that's key in being able to um, close longer term contracts with that customer, taking advantage of opportunities that are available to us now, as well as uh, the information that we know moving forward uh, in the NYMEX uh, natural gas analytics. And so uh, couple that with that we have made some security upgrades to our system. And that is with the uh, ISO. Uh, and you will be getting an email today uh, where you can read a little bit more about how we've done some security upgrades to ensure that our customers uh, are protected and their information is secure and safe, uh, as well as the autumn sale incentives uh, that are put out there by uh, Mega, Hudson, SFE, and Direct Energy. It is also available on the website. So if you go to the uh, corporate website, which is at truepower.org and click on articles, you will see the partner autumn sale incentives. And so if you're out there writing contracts, there are these partners uh, and suppliers have put together some really good bonuses uh, for you to take advantage of to make some extra money. Uh, so take a look at this, understand a little bit more about how you can uh, make more income uh, by aggregating all of your deals together uh, on both your electric contracts as well as your natural gas contracts. And so, that is available right here under articles. If you click on articles on the corporate website, it will bring up uh, all of the articles here and all you need to do is just click on read more and it will open up the rest of that article, uh, which really is for your digestion. But um, so anyways, there's some good bonuses uh, to be had. So take advantage of it. Um, and yes, um, let's go over, cause I had somebody have this happen to them yesterday and that was in the, uh, CRM. And so they were trying to send a customer, uh, an email. And when they clicked on the email and selected, uh, the email that they wanted to send out, because their monitor was a very small monitor, um, they had no way of seeing the these buttons. They were actually below the screen. So it, to them, it looked like this. And so uh, if you ever happen to run in that and, and you try to move that up and it's still not you know, showing up, um, then go up here into the top right hand corner of your browser, click on that and you'll see the zoom 
and all you need to do is just click that down one time usually 90 percent is going to shrink that enough that that will make the buttons appear so if you run into that situation uh, there is your solution or get yourself a larger monitor um, anyway so i want to take a moment and open up the floor uh, for a little q a you should be able to unmute yourself. Hey, Matt, this is Clarence. How are you? Good day to you, Clarence. I'm good. I'm good. I, I got to tell you, Matt, um, I don't have a COVID in 30 days within this. Um, I see myself making some millions with this. The light bulb has went off. And, um, you know, at making calls and stuff, I see um, open emails. So far, I can see myself with 12 open emails per week, right? Um, as far as advertising, I'm getting likes and shares and stuff. And um, I got some balance with this where I'm able to now go outside because face-to-face is a little bit easier. But I see myself like getting sales over the phone, face-to-face, -face, even with um, residential and solar, um, you know, people are starting to gravitate to it, you know, and I'm pretty much nurturing an audience right there, letting them get familiar with me as in, you know, any ad would. So um, I see myself, um, doing pretty good. I want to ask you, Matt, uh, based on what I just mentioned to you, am I on the right track as far as what I'm predicting so far? Um, because I see well, myself you, like with 12 open emails per week. Yeah, you should. Um, if you don't set those goals, you certainly don't achieve them, right? Right. Um, you know, it's kind of like in the old days, I always used to keep a tick sheet in front of me where I would make a minimum of 300 dials a day. And every time I made a dial, I ticked off the number and then I had uh, contacts and then I had the pitches and then I had my closes. And, and so I knew that back then I smoked. So, um, you know, I would not go outside and have a cigarette until I made 50 phone calls or right. uh, what have you. So I think you have to put, you know, those little goals in front of you. I'm not going to get up. I'm not going to get distracted. I'm not going to do anything other than accomplish the task of making my life and my customer's life better. Uh, you know, using, when you take and look at our two core values, and that is to conduct business with integrity, right? Um, and don't do it unless it's good for the customer. Uh, I think that when you, when you couple that uh, and start putting in some good uh, work ethics, I mean, look, if you went to a brick and mortar and you were going to the office somewhere, uh, you know, do you think you would, you'd have to go and check with your manager and say, hey, uh, I, I feel like I need to go out and walk my dog. So I need to go home. I need to take an hour off to go and walk my dog and do all of this other shenanigans. So whether you're at home or wherever you are, when you put on you know, your work hat and you're sitting in front of your computer, just because you're at home doesn't mean that you shouldn't conduct business professionally. And so when I'm working, everybody knows, uh, don't mess with me. Don't, you know, don't ask me things because I'm working uh, no different than unless it was an emergency. So I think you have to, to present yourself with good work ethics. And when you start getting that rhythm, you're going to find that it starts clicking and then you're going to see your pipelines filling up. You start getting responses, but it also gives you that confidence so that when you talk to people, um, you can talk with an authority and not really him on. It's like, well, you know, we kind of do this and we kind of do that. Uh, and I think that it, being specific on one item at a time is important. Um, you know, I've, I've seen a couple emails that have come back from customers for people to where they've, they've done the right thing, but they've embellished the templated email with a list of, you know, uh, uh, all of uh, 
what's available that we do. And I think it overwhelms the customer. They get the wrong idea. And I see responses occasionally where customers are saying things like, uh, we have somebody that takes care of making sure that we have the best rate. Uh, thank you, but we're, we're not interested right now. They've lost the total uh, reason why you called them to begin with. The reason we're calling them is for the utility audit, right? Somebody says, well, I, we're, we're good. We're not interested. What are you not interested in? Do you know why I'm calling? Because sometimes they just form that opinion just based on the company name, right? True Power. Oh, you're calling about the electric. Uh, you're trying to change right. our, our supplier right. and all that. Well, that mm -hmm. might be true down the road. But right now, the reason I'm calling is because my records show that you have not had a utility audit in the past three to four years. Is that correct? What do you mean? Okay, so you are overdue. And keep it very linear in that regards. So if they start saying things like, you know, uh, we don't want to switch our electric. That's not why I'm calling. Oh, we don't want to do that. That's not why I'm calling. We don't want to do That's not why I'm calling. The reason I'm calling is because the utility company, what most people don't know is that the onus and responsibility of making sure that the utility bill is correct is on the customer, not the utility. In fact, most of the line items that we audit are actually not on the utility bill, but buried within the utility. And so physically, there is absolutely no way possible for you to be able to do it. So for you to just say, well, we check on that, we handle that, and uh, we take care of that kind of stuff, and we're, we're good to go. Really? Okay, so uh, tell me how much you pay for uh, capacity. Uh, tell me how much you pay. What are your billing errors? What are your classification errors, your tariff? What do you pay for tariff? Well, it's not on the bill. Okay, well, so you don't know. Uh, that's why we do an audit. And at the end of the day, look, it's 100% risk-free, right? We don't charge you a penny. You're going to get one of two results at the completion of that audit. One, congratulations, there are no errors. You have a clean bill of health. Uh, continue doing what you're doing, God bless you. And uh, you know, here's a lollipop. The other side is here are the errors and the amount of the refund, do you want your money back? And I've never had anybody say no. So the decision process is after you have the facts and the information in front of you to make an intelligent decision. In other words, anybody who's in charge of controlling cost of a business has to have all of the facts in front of them in order to make an intelligent decision. Would you say that's fair? Yes. And you are an intelligent individual? Yes. Okay, so would you like to have the facts in front of you to make an intelligent decision? No, okay. Do you mind if I also send you an invoice, uh, an in erroneous invoice? Will you pay it too? Well, of course not. Well, you might be doing it now. The only difference is you don't know. And so by putting your head in the sand doesn't mean that the wind stopped blowing, right? So at the end of the day, sometimes you just have to, what I call the proverbial, you know, shake them a little bit and, and get them to wake up and, and, and don't talk about electricity and solar and all of these other things. Keep right. it one lane uh, about the electricity, unless you're going to open with a specific market and, and you're not stuck with that. You know, I want to be clear, but it's proven uh, in the data that, I mean, last year during COVID, we did five times as much business as we did uh, years previous. Why? Because when we open with the utility audit, it's a much softer, friendlier, easier approach. There's a billion other brokers out there. And sometimes they're using this terminology of auditing their utility bill when in fact, what they're really doing is just looking at it and going over to their, their pricing and comparing what they have uh, you know, in the past as to what they might be able to provide for moving forward. 
that's not what we're talking about, right? We can certainly do that. And we'll talk about that maybe sometime down the road, but that's not why I'm here, Mr. Jones. I'm here today to provide a service for you and your colleagues and, and you know people that are in your type of business to let you know that, hey, you have the potential of getting back an extreme amount of money, uh, you know, for errors that go back three to four years. Now, let's just assume that if I if I am able to uncover uh, $50,000 and you get $50,000 back for going back three years, that means it's also $50,000 you're not going to pay moving forward. Now, knowing that, how long do you want to wait to make a decision? Well, first off, you can't make an intelligent decision until you have all of the information and the facts in front of you. Would you agree with that? Yes. Great. What's your email address? Boom. Put it in there. I'm going to shoot you an email with my contact information. So you've got my information uh, along with some information on uh, a little bit more in depth on the audit, along with the link to where you can uh, send a copy of your most recent utility bill. Uh, and then we'll get the audit rolling for you. I'll keep, it, keep you abreast of what's going on. But at this point, what we need to do is perform the audit. And then at that point, we can discuss if you want to move forward. But that's the only way you can make an intelligent decision. Agreed? Um, have a great week. Uh, be safe out there on Halloween and uh, don't drink and drive. Uh, we will see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much.